So, I've made videos on how the equipment we use in football has evolved over the years. But today, inspired by my friends over at Skill & Shoot, I wanted to see how the game itself has changed. I'm going to be looking at the evolution of free kicks, skills and penalties. And I think you'll be pretty surprised at some of the techniques that were used back in the day. This is the evolution of football. So in the early 1900s, the balls they used were really heavy, so the options when it came to taking free kicks were limited. The chosen method was to avoid the wall completely and go for power. And despite more skillful players getting involved, in the 1950s, power shots were still the preferred method of free kick, and that's the technique Pelé used to score most of his 70 free kick goals. At this point, players were aiming the shots low down in the goal, and teams started to get creative with fake runs trying to fool the keeper. By the 1970s, a load of new ideas were introduced. Players would pass the ball around the wall to create a better angle for a shot, or chip it up for a volley. In the 1980s, with the introduction of more modern, lighter footballs, players like Zico would put curve on the ball, and there was a big shift in focus from less power, more precision. And by the 1990s, curve was a well-established way to take a free kick, and that popularity only increased when David Beckham came on the scene. Beckham's ultra-curve technique was probably the most famous and recognisable way to take a free kick, and inspired movies and future generations of footballers coming through today. All right. In conclusion, it's not very easy to put as much curve on the ball as Bex, that's for sure. Well, the late 90s, early 2000s, players have started to develop their own signature free kick techniques, such as Roberto Carlos and his famous power swerve free kick. Oh There was also a big shift in focus to consistency. Players like Janino had it down to a science, scoring 77 free kick goals along his career. The hardest shot ever recorded came from a free kick back in 2006 from Ronnie Herbison. Check this rocket out. Moving on to modern times, now the knuckleball is probably the most famous technique, only done by a few select players. One of those, of course, is Cristiano Ronaldo. Gareth Bales managed to put his own twist on the knuckleball by striking more with the inside of his foot and allowing the ball to bounce just before the keeper. There's now also more tactics involved around a free kick with teams orchestrating whole routines around a set piece. But all these advancements don't necessarily mean more goals. Ronaldo scored just seven of his 112 free kicks in the 2013-14 season. Now moving on to skills and in the early 1900s the boots made any type of skill pretty much impossible. I think it's pretty obvious why the skills went up too much back in the 1900s. I mean, look at these boots, you're not doing any skills in these. Combined with this ball, there's not much going on. In the 1950s, Pele was probably the most skillful player at the time, but even he relied on a combination of fake shots, nutmegs and quick sprints to get past players. By the 1960s, skills still weren't a massive part of the game until players like Garincha came along and started to do things like step overs and flicks over people's heads. In the 1970s, one of the most iconic skills of all time was created by Johan Cruyff, the Cruyff turn, and to this day, it's still one of the most used skills in the game. By the 1980s, skills were becoming an ever-increasing part of the game, with players like Maradona showing just how effective they can be. At the time, no one had skills like Maradona. He had ultimate control over the ball and could even manoeuvre past multiple defenders at once. Now, a player that would be impossible not to mention when covering the evolution of skills in football is, of course, Ronaldinho. Probably the most influential player of his time, he played with flair and skill was a huge part of his game. He showed fans how skills once only seen on the street could be used effectively in games. Most famously, the Elastico flip flap. <laughs> Ronaldinho also featured in dozens of night commercials in the early 2000s, showing off his freestyle skills. And if you ask any freestyler today to name their inspiration getting into the sport, Ronaldinho would be at the top of the list. And moving on to the 2010s, players were able to combine skillments together and perform them with speed running at defenders. We've also got players like Neymar who have popularised things like sombrero flicks and rainbow flicks, but it's clear he was inspired by previous generations. And now in 2020, in the most popular leagues in the world, skills tend to be used for more efficiency and purpose rather than flair, such as Ronaldo Chop, McGeady Spin and the Cruyff Turn. So walking up to take a penalty in the early 1900s, 
I'm not going to be feeling very confident with a pair of these on and a ball that's heavy like this. The only technique is going to have to be a toe poke. By the 1960s, players started to think about placement a bit more. It was common to see a slow run up and then place the ball to either side. So it wasn't until the 1970s that penalty shootouts got introduced to big tournaments and finals. Before then, if extra time couldn't separate the two teams, it went down to a replay or a coin toss. All right, let's see who's won this game, mate. Yes, I've won. Good game, mate. By the 70s and 80s, a long run-up and hitting the ball with power was the favourite technique, although the more skillful players such as Maradona would be aiming for the top corners. Stars. Game one rides on this kick. Giovanni Savarese on the right foot, still on the right foot. In the 1990s, the American MLS League decided to experiment with how a penalty shootout should be done. They tried a 32 metre run at 1v1 situation where the striker had 5 seconds to score past the keeper. By the looks of it, this made scoring penalties a lot more difficult, but obviously, I had to try this out for myself. So I wanted to try this MLS penalty shootout for myself, just to see how difficult it is and how much different it is to a normal penalty. 3, 2, 1, go! This is difficult, eh? <laughs> I think that might have been over five seconds. It's a good work, that lad, bro. Two, one, snap. There we go. Imagine how tense it would be waiting to do this in front of loads of fans. It'd be insane. Despite it first being seen in the 1976 Euros final, the Penenka penalty really skyrocketed after Zidane pulled one off in the 2006 World Cup final. Check this out. In the late 2000s and 2010s, the most popular penalty technique was to hit the ball hard and low, with nearly 70% of Germany's penalties going in the bottom corners, and their record speaks for itself. No matter what they call it. And now we move on to 2020, where literally anything goes jump penalties, fall over penalties, backflip penalties. We've seen it all in the modern game. Now in 2021, with the recent introduction of VAR, penalties favour the striker more than ever, because if the keeper takes even the slightest step of his mark, the penalty will get taken again. So that is the evolution of football and how the game has changed over the last 100 years. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.